As students head back to school, physicals, well visits, and childhood immunizations are top of mind for many parents. But for parents of preteens and even teenagers, the HPV vaccine is especially important. I'm Laura Wheatholder. I'm a registered nurse and community outreach coordinator for Blessing Health System. I'm joined today by nurse practitioner Leah Hemming with the Blessing Cancer Center. Leah, thank you for joining us today. Can you take a minute to introduce yourself? Absolutely. My name is Leah Hemming. I am, I've been with the Blessing Health System for about 23 years, um, mostly as a registered nurse. And now I have been at the Blessing Cancer Center as a certified nurse practitioner um, since the start of our clinic in 2017. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. As I mentioned, we're going to be talking about the HPV vaccine. So let's start with some basic information. What is HPV and why should parents consider getting their children vaccinated against it? Absolutely. Uh, when most people hear about HPV, they think about young girls getting a vaccine to prevent cervical cancer. However, there are many more types of cancers associated with HPV. HPV stands for human papillomavirus, and it's a virus that can cause certain types of cancers. It's the most common type of sexually transmitted virus. Um, the National Cancer Institute suggests most people will have an HPV infection at some point in their life. HPV causes abnormal growth of cells or proliferation, and that can cause an increased risk of certain types of cancers, including tonsillar, tongue, um, oropharynx, cervical, vaginal, vulvar, penile, and anal. There's two types of classifications of HPV infections. The first one being cutaneous or skin, and then the second one being mucosal, uh, meaning like moist surfaces. There are more than 80 types of cutaneous viruses, and they're most common causing hand and foot warts. Now, there are more than 40 types of mucosal viruses, and most of those, um, and most cancer causing types being the virus 16 and 18. Parents should strongly consider getting their children's va children vaccinated against HPV because the vaccine is the only vaccine available that has the ability to pre prevent those types of cancers. Plus, the vaccine can help prevent HPV infections. And so, okay, so we've talked about the vaccine um, being proven to help prevent HPV. Uh, you know, a parent might not necessarily know if their child has HPV or, um, you know, and, and then that could also lead to developing certain types, types of cancer. You briefly mentioned, um, you know, children, we talked about teens and preteens, but who should be vaccinated? So both boys and girls need to be vaccinated. When the vaccine first became available, it was a big push for girls. And then boys eventually became um, the, the suggestion or the recommendation eventually became for boys to be vaccinated. But both boys and girls need to be vaccinated. There's about 43 million HPV infections diagnosed annually. Typically, our body's immune system takes care of most infections without the person ever knowing that they were infected. Most infections resolve within 12 months um, from the time that they were infected. But some infections that don't clear, and those are the ones that can cause cellular changes, which over time can lead to cancer. Precancerous um, cervical lesions, in fact, on average, take up to 10 years to be detected from the initial time of sexual contact. Um, HPV can lie dormant for up to 40 years before it transitions into cancer. The average age for HPV positive head and neck cancer diagnosis is between age 30 and age 55. So in the U.S., greater than 45,000 people are diagnosed with HPV positive cancer each year. Um, in fact, the CDC is now reporting that HPV positive oropharyngeal, so head and neck cancers, have surpassed that of cervical cancer in women. While cervical cancer is still the most common type of HPV cancer in women, HPV positive head and neck cancers are most common in men. And then, of course, nearly, nearly all anal cancers are HPV positive as well. So a lot of different cancers linked to HPV, not just for girls, girls and boys both should consider being vaccinated or parents of boys and girls should consider having their children vaccinated against this because it's linked to a lot of different cancers and can and affect people of both uh, genders. So what 
age, because I understand there is a certain age where they're really targeting. Talk about what age parents should start thinking about um, getting their children vaccinated. Okay, the CDC recommends routine vaccination at age 11 to 12. However, they can be started as early as um, nine. The vaccine works best when it's given before any exposure. Um, according to the National Cancer Institute, nearly 50% of high school students have engaged in sexual intercourse. One third of ninth graders and two thirds of 12th graders have had sex and 24% of high school seniors have had sex with, um, or sexual intercourse with four or more partners. So the first dose, is, as previously recommended, can be given as early age nine, and then the second dose should be given six to 12 months after the first dose. For patients that um, don't receive the first dose until age 15, so those individuals between 15 to 26, or patients that are immunocompromised, whether it's from a disease, or um, medicines that they take, those individuals or those patients, they're recommended for a three dose schedule. So they get a dose on day one, they'll get a dose one to two months later, and then their third dose is at the six month mark. Okay, so two shots um, for most people, unless for some reason they got it later, beginning at about age 11. Um, and, and, it, and it might be a tough topic for maybe some parents of preteens to start thinking about because we're talking about sexually transmitted diseases, and I'm a parent of a preteen, so I know it's kind of hard to think about that, but it's important to start considering these things and, and preventing because they should have this vaccine before they start having sexual intercourse, correct? Correct, and the, the, the big concern is it is the focus needs to be more on a cancer prevention vaccine um, because parents, like you said, are concerned with, is this going to give my child permission to have sex? Well, typically children are going to have sex because they are young adults and that's, that's as common as eating and drinking. That's, that's the whole reason that we can continue on as a human species and human population is through sex. So if we can do something that prevents that act potentially contracting a virus that could potentially cause cancer, it's a win-win. So focus on the cancer prevention portion of it um, when you're thinking about this. And we talk about cancer. What about adults? Can adults get this vaccine or is it just for those, those young adolescents? That's a great question. Um, ACIP is the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. They provide guidance to the director of the CDC and they recommend vaccination for everyone uh, through age 26 if they were not already vaccinated previously. So for patients 27 to 45, the vaccine can be given. It should be a shared decision making between the individual and their physician. However, vaccination at these ages provides less benefit as most people in those age groups have had sexual intercourse and may have already been exposed to the virus. Again, the virus can prevent new HPV infections, but it can't treat existing HPV infections. The vaccine, you mean, can, can prevent new HPV vac uh, infections. Okay. Um, so, hot topic. Um, is it safe? I know there's a lot of questions out there about vaccine safety. So is it safe? Are there side effects? What do parents need to know? Another great question. The vaccine is safe for most patients. Uh, anyone who's ever had an acute, moderate or severe illness at the time of vaccination should delay the vaccination until their health improves. Meaning if you if you come in with you know, RSV, you're gonna wanna wait until you your health improves before starting the series. Anyone that's ever had a reaction to a prior dose should avoid immunization. Anyone with an anaphylactic or severe respiratory allergy to latex should avoid the vaccine as the pre-filled syringe could contain a natural rubber latex. And then anyone with an immediate hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity to yeast. Um, one note is the vaccine is not recommended for use during pregnancy. Now, reactions that can occur, um, they're mostly localized to the site of injection with minor redness and swelling. Um, there is a report um, 10 to 13 percent of patients that receive the dose, uh, which is a pretty small percentage, um, up to the first 15 days after the immunization, a mild temperature of 100 degrees has occurred. 
So overall, it sounds like um, the the possible, I guess, side effects, if you want to call them that, are really kind of mild and maybe what you would expect with any other vaccine. Um, But if you have concerns, we always want to encourage people to have that discussion with your primary care provider or with your pediatrician um, and and talk to them about um, your individual case and your individual circumstances to get that guidance. Exactly. Is there anything else today that you would like to add about HPV, about the vaccine, or anything that we maybe didn't talk about that you want parents to know? Um, Basically, the fact that this is a cancer prevention vaccine. If we can prevent the virus um, exposure before it happens, that's it's going to be a win win. The easiest way to treat cancer is to prevent it. That was um, perfectly stated. I really appreciate you taking time to talk with us today. Um, And and again, parents, talk to your primary care provider or your pediatrician if you'd like more information. You can also find more uh, information on the HPV vaccine on our website, blessinghealth.org slash HPV. Thank you so much for being with us today.